and getting ready to watch this Monday night football game, man. But I had something on my heart and I want to lay it. And, and, and I thought to myself, man, you know, because I wanted to address a few things and, and I want to start with the Deshaun Watson situation. I didn't get a chance to talk about it on TV today. So I'm going to address it here. And it was interesting that I didn't get a chance to talk about it on TV, being that, you know, I certainly can relate to the situation. I, too, was accused. I also laid on the carpet on the football field with a, certainly a game ending, ending, a season ending, and a career ending injury while people cheer. All of it, I think, makes me uniquely suited to just share. And though I didn't get a chance to do it on TV today, that's what makes having my little mad mic form right here. A chance to chat with you, all that much more important. <clears throat> as a man and as a football player, I first felt empathy. where he was, I could feel what he was going through. I too was accused of a horrific thing. And I had to go back and play football with everybody saying that I had basically done this thing. Well, no, let me, everybody say it. I held a gun to a girl head while three other dudes raped her. They told everybody I wasn't there. I don't know, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I wasn't there, not me, I wasn't there. But nobody believed me. And this thing ran for weeks. And I kept saying, guys, I wasn't there. And it wasn't me wasn't there. Ultimately, I went through all kinds of situations about it. Ended up, I ended my career a few short years later, laying on the carpet in Philadelphia with people cheering. Now, first, I will say this to you. After that accusation of a horrific act by me got out and I was saying I didn't do anything I didn't do it guys I didn't do it and, and, and the media scrum that followed me everywhere questioning and saying I wasn't telling the truth I mean even though in the end when they found out as I said I wasn't there wasn't me. I sued everybody, won millions of dollars, got paid the money. They exported the girl, but I was never the same. I was never the same. Even though I wasn't, I wasn't even there. I was never the same because you try to build back to where you were, you try to get back physically, that's one thing. Emotionally, that's another thing. And spiritually, even another. And you're always thinking and wondering what is everybody else thinking and wondering about you now that everybody heard these horrific things about you. Building from that place is a hard thing. Because you see and look around and you wonder. And then you hear the little chirps and jokes and all the little things that you that people say. But you gotta keep moving forward. And Deshaun Watson was trying to do that. That's why seeing that situation happen like that, and I'm not speaking 
on because I don't know what happened with all of these accusations that came after him. If you ask me to dig deep in my soul, I would have to split it this way and say, it's hard to believe that there is nothing there. But it's also hard to believe that all 30 happened and nothing happened until the lawsuit happened. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> It's just hard to believe both ways, you know. It's hard to believe both ways, and, and and I don't know. And maybe none of it happened, and maybe all of it happened. I don't know, but it's hard to believe that thirty times that happened, and yeah, and all of a sudden they all come forward at one time, and nobody ever went to the police for you. You see what I'm saying? All of that, and I understand all of that. And I understand people, you have a right to your opinion about all of that. You really do, because it's out there. And, and one thing I used to always say, man, so, oh my God, man, I wish this never would have happened. I wish it never would have happened. You know, it was, I, I, I went through a mediation with them. And my mediation, when I was talking with the, the news, the TV station, and police, I was suing everybody all of them, I said to them, when we sat in a conference room in Austin, Texas, because they pulled us out of practice, out of practice, me and Eric Williams, because Eric was also, it, was, it happened at Eric Williams' house, and he was accused. They put me in this thing. I wasn't even there. I said to them, because the mediation is when they come and try to make sure they want to see what you have to say if you're put on a court, put in a court and put it on the, on the stands in a courtroom. And, and so what they do, they give you a few minutes to speak to share your thoughts about the case. And then he'll take one group and go in one room and take the other group and go in the next room. And a mediator, that's why it's called a mediation, goes from one place to the other talking to each side trying to cut a deal. I got a chance to speak at this mediation and I spoke to all of the lawyers. They had four or five big time lawyers. And I said, I too graduated from the U. I went to the University of Miami. I graduated after my junior year of eligibility to come into the league. My degree is in business. But what I just saw, I'll never be able to do. I just saw, you know, four or five, where I'm in it ahead, lawyers, well-dressed, with your briefcase, walking in this room, respectable business men. I said, I can never walk in a room like you just walked in a room because this will follow me the rest of my life. This accusation and the way you guys carried it over and over and over, saying it over and over and over, as if I was guilty before the fact, it's going to follow me for the rest of my life. And it did. After speaking with them for a few and speaking in front of them for a few, they settled because they knew I was right. They knew that it took something from me that I could never get back. And again, I don't know what happened with the Deshaun Watson situation. But I know how that started with me. I've watched Deshaun Watson over the last couple of years, and I watch him try to fight back. It's a hard place. And I thought last year, right before with Nick Chubb going, I thought they had something going. And I thought they were working towards something. And then remember, he got hurt. Man, pushed back. Then he's right back in it. And then some other case came up. And he's back in it. And I don't know. And this year, it just didn't look the same. 
but to have this man go down and to have them chant, you deserve that. You deserve it. That's a sad day in the NFL. And we are much better than that. That was, it was very sad to see. It was so sad to see. I appreciate <clears throat> what Jameis Winston said. And I imagine you know, no one can speak to it better because he was there every day. He saw Deshaun trying to fight his way back physically, emotionally, and spiritually, just like I said. And, 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 and man, you could see the depth of hurt that he felt. Miles Garrett, I could see the depth of hurt that he felt. That's hard. That was hard watching it. It was hard watching it. And I'm just saying, man, I know we're better than that. I know Cleveland got some fans, and I know they're very passionate fans, and I love passionate fans. I, myself, when I got hurt, I forgave and didn't even think about holding anything against Philadelphia for booing me or clapping when I got hurt or whatever. I remember the owner coming to my hospital room when I was laid up in the bed. paralyzed and his lips were shaking because he was so hurt by what he witnessed. And I, I, I wanted to release him. I said to him, hey, we're good. Your fans are just passionate, just like me. I wanted to release him because he's a good man. And I understand that they're just passionate. And I had been banging their butts up for about 10 years anyway, so I understood it that way. Okay, I had been banging them up for 10 years, so I understood that they're just saying, they're not happy he's hurt, they're just saying, we happy he ain't gonna be hurting us. You see what I mean? I took that as a passion. Oh, he's going to leave in the game. He, you, you know, they didn't know that I was going to be paralyzed. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that. Because I don't believe we are that. Me dealing with that and getting that on the road in Philadelphia, or as I may have told you guys one time in Carolina, that the, the way people chirped at me after all of that, after what was a false accusation in the first place, that I wasn't even there. The way people came at me was difficult. But I balanced it out with the way I was being treated at home. Because paid for the Cowboys, but they also, they were closest to the story. They knew, they, had, they were vested in it. They knew, I kept telling them I wasn't there. And I told the reporters, I said, I want you guys to cover this with the same intensity when you find out it was that. So, 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 you know, though none of that really happened. You know, they were invested. They knew, they knew. So they gave me love. So I was able to balance that true love that I got at home with that real pain that I was feeling on the road. I say all of this to say, man, I can't imagine what that young Deshaun Watson is going through. And I, I, I know I'd imagine a lot of people don't even care, but I can't imagine. Hmm. They got it on the road. And the people you're trying to fight for, you're trying to put yourself back together so you can best serve and deliver to them. When you got home, they gave it to you too. I don't know if he'll ever play football again. I certainly don't think he'll ever play in Cleveland. But I'm gonna wish him the best. And, 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 and all you Cleveland fans, hey, I know how this thing started. I got no issue with it. I, I just think you're, you're better than that. You're better than that. You know, people may say, well, Deshaun Watson didn't want to come here in the first place, and you would be right. Remember, Atlanta was going to sign him, but Cleveland came in and gave an all-out guaranteed deal that I really thought was a great deal at the time. And, 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 and honestly, think about this. If you go, if he had worked out, everything worked out great, 
they would have been having a big time quarterback at forty million dollars when the number now is really sixty five million or right, thirty million and number sixty five million. So they were ahead of the curve before those numbers jumped way where they jumped right now. But for some reason, he couldn't put it back together. And I'm just telling you how hard it is. Don't underestimate that kind of battle of putting it back together. All I want to close this with in this moment is just saying, I'm praying for you, my brother. I'm praying for everybody involved in this whole situation. And I hope somehow, some way, all of this pain leads to some kind of great promise and maybe it help somebody down the road or some kind of way. I'm praying for you, man. God bless you. All right, guys, I, I listen, there's a couple more things. I want, I want to make sure I say this. And remind me, Tuesday when we do our live stream, I want to talk to you guys about the Deshaun Watson situation. I want to hear from you and what you think of it. I think that's a hell of a conversation to hear. That's what we're going to talk about. I want to talk about that. I also want to talk to you about what you thought of the Russell Wilson situation. I thought that was interesting. You know, that was very interesting to see they put Russell Wilson in and what happened in Pittsburgh and the kind of whom 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 does it take to even have the, the you know what to make that decision at four and two to go to Russell Wilson and what Mike Tomlin did right there. A lot going on with that Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. You still didn't win that game and you've been pulling all of those levels. First, the level, boop, head coach gone. Boop, we're going to sign Devontae Adams. And boop, you still lose in football games. Where do you go from here? We must discuss that too. The big thing I want to talk about and talk to you guys about is Brock Purdy versus Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to break that down for you so well, man. I'm going to take that cake and break all the way back down to the main ingredients, flour and sugar. And I'm going to let you know which is which. Brock Purdy to Patrick Mahomes, I'll tell you why. That's a huge difference, man. Were you talking about playing those two? Now, putting that perfect offense, oh, my God. Brock Purdy looks great doing that, doing what he does, because he's always finding the right person and finding the right player. But remember, remember, here's the problem. When Brock Purdy and Patrick Mahomes meet that nobody's talking about, they're running the same offense. That means each defense sees that offense all day, every day. So now... What defenses are doing, what, brought, what what Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs defense are doing is saying, we know the offense you're running. We know if we're running double slants over here, you're going to read this man and throw to that man. So we're going to set you up. We're going to think, and we know, Brock Purdy, that you're great at making the right read. So we're going to make you think that that right read, and that's the right read, is open. And we're going to trap you. I'm a fool like I'm covering this guy, and your read takes you there, and in the last second, I'm going to intercept that ball and steal that read that you go to away. Now, the question becomes, and here's what I be telling people about Patrick Mahomes, the question becomes, can you pull that ball back down and play above the coaching and go make a play? You don't get Patrick Mahomes enough credit. You see, he can pull that ball back down and go above the coaching and makes a play. That's the brilliance. And this is the difference. You will see. Just like you saw yesterday, you'll see <laughs> forever. Probably forever. Now, Brock Purdy, even though Patrick Mahomes, I think he's undefeated against San Fran. It'll take something because it's, you're talking about two quarterbacks and you're saying to one, Okay, since we're doing, everybody knows what we're doing. Now the one who's going to win is the one who can go above coaching. Above coaching. And nobody does that better than 1-5 Patrick Mahomes. Tomorrow we shall talk about it when we're talking together one with another on the Mad Mike. See you tomorrow.